Today we're here to talk about engine uh, company 109. And uh, as you know, Chicago is one of the few cities, I say few, very few cities ever build schools, ever build fire, police stations, libraries. They, they stopped all that many years ago and they said, we don't have enough money. But just think, they don't have enough money to rebuild the city. And when a city lives in the past, it dies in the past. You, if you don't have birth and rebirth in a family, it dies. And that's when a city cannot die. You always have the things moving and moving forward. If you don't, then what we see many cities have lost and they're losing uh, people. But again, our first responders, uh, fire police stations that we build. And these buildings show community support, commu community support, an anchor for the community. Realization that a police station is for the community. It's not just for the police. You know, and so that is very important, how we open these police stations, it becomes part of the community. CAPS is part of the community. If you want drug dealers, gang bangers, you know who they are. They don't fall from heaven. They're right here in each block. You know who they are. Now, if you don't turn them in and no one worries, then you have another killing, another shooting. And you can only blame the police so long. You have to look in the mirror and say to myself, I live on this block. I, such an age, why can a drug dealer at the age of 14 or 15 tell me what I should do or my family or my children take my child away from my church and, and, and my home? Why? Why is that taking place in America? People have to stand up for their family. You have to stand up for your home and your block. You organize and say, here, these are my children. I can't have my children lost, lost in, in, in a valley. We have to bring them back. And that's what people have to do. If they don't, then what happens is they lose another child. And you have another march. Never march after the crime, march before. If you march before, you won't have these issues. But can only say so much to the people uh, that realize they just have to get off the couch and get on the porch and start walking down the street and say, I'm your neighbor and I want to talk to you. Otherwise, it's very difficult for anybody to do this. And we know we have current economic problems in the country. That's, we know that. We've heard from people laid off. We've seen tradesmen laid off. Over 30 years, some of them, laid off. They can't get a job. We see our neighbors being laid off, cut back. Your sons and daughters graduate from college, can't even get a job. So we have to rebuild America. Listen, we didn't go through a depression. We can rebuild this. We have to have more confidence in one another, more confidence in this country. If we don't, then we're going to have second class, no way. We're going to have a great, we have a great country. And let's start thinking more positive and how we can move forward. And that's why I spend a lot of money on infrastructure, schools, you got people working and, and get businesses moving and everything else. Otherwise, and rebuild the community, which you have to have. When they complete later this facility, Engine 109 and Little Village Library right there will form a shared campus united in design by coordinated brick, metal, and integrated landscaping. Landscaping for the community, which is really important. The new one-story, 14,000 square foot house, firehouse features load-bearing masonry, uh, exterior finished brick, includes amenities, combinations up to 16 firefighters, space to house multiple emergency response vehicles, host tower, watchtower, staffing, training, educational room, and full service kitchen and dining room to, to basically make sure that uh, firefighters are well educated and well trained. Because we, want, we don't want to jeopardize lives and they save a lot of lives. And the new library, 16,000 square foot uh, library, 45,000 books, reading room, seating capacity, 144 patrons, a multi-purpose room, seating capacity is 70 people, 32 hard wired computers, wireless internet, access throughout, on-site parking for 16 vehicles. Now when people tell me my child can't read, and I say that's a free library, open six days a week. What do you mean your child can't read? What happened to you? Come here, it's free. F-R-E-E, -E. you can take your child there, you can walk there, and you can sit there when I don't have anything to do there in the summer. Libraries, bring your children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren to the library and sit down with them and talk to them and get a librarian to work with you on behalf of your child. And that's what we have to start doing. And municipal buildings are important. Environmentally friendly, reducing energy costs. Uh, we include green reflective roofs, aggressive storm water. When it rains, we want to keep that rainwater right here. 
native adapted landscaping, automatic low flowing plumbing fixtures. Every time you flush the toilet, there's a lot of water going down there. So we have low flowing plumbing fixtures, light sensors, so lights are not on, daylight harvesting, which is really important. So these are all community anchors and anchors are important to the community. And I'm very proud of the commitment we've all made. We've renovated Piotrowski Park, Development Home and Square Community Center. Uh, we've acquired 11 acres of open space here, built five new play playgrounds. We continue to invest new market tax credits, foster job creation, people need jobs. We allocated 15 million to rehab Home and Square Powerhouse uh, from a factory to the Home and Powerhouse Academy Charter School. Created 60 jobs, results in a quality of education for our children. Think outside the box. Don't, don't accept anything. We want our children to be the best educated children in America, in the world, to compete for jobs. We have dedicated $5 million for Charter Steel Trading Company to keep 66 jobs right here in the city, uh, city of Chicago and create another 30. Lighting improvements, ADA accessibility on sidewalks. Uh, we looked at all types of development. Over 50 million of TIF money has been sent, spent in the community. $30 million to renovate Collins High School. Uh, installation of artificial turf field in conjunction with Chicago Park District. So everybody should be at that park uh, after school and on weekends. That should be a place that they want to be in Douglas Park. That should be a great park for everybody to use. We have a library, media center, we have new classrooms, uh, other improvements of Collins. So that's part and part of it. We have built more schools, Little Village High School. We have four smaller schools that we built uh, dealing with all types of programs uh, at the uh, Little Village. And we want good standards and accountability and children should be able to do that, which is necessary. And you know, our firemen are doing a good job. They're here to help somebody, which is really important. Uh, we have constructed six new campus parks, 17 play lots. We've offered rental home ownership on behalf of residents all over, uh, uh, in, uh, all over Douglas uh, and Independence Boulevard, saving a lot of those great gray stones in the city. We have affordable uh, rental units at uh, Parade's Apartments, Canadian Homes, Little Village Homes throughout many, many communities. CHA Plan for Transformation, which is really important to rebuilding people's, they should not be placed for the, for the rest of their lives. We have to rebuild their lives. And not just with a home, with basically social services on behalf of those people. The Douglas Blue Line, we've committed quite a bit of money. We have improved uh, all types of uh, L and L platforms and metro stations. But most important, it's the black clubs and community organizations that make up the city. Those are the people and families that really make up uh, this, this love of the city, uh, this passion of the city. And we know we have problems. Everybody knows that. You have problems here. You have problems in America. But no problem should overcome any of us. No problem should overcome a family, overcome a community, or a block, or a city, or a state, or a nation. And to me, that is what we have to be. We know we have issues, but we don't have to dwell on the issues. Just get out and do something and move forward. That's that I will spirit of the city of Chicago. Think all the good tradesmen that are really making remarkable strides here in the city of Chicago have done a tremendous job. So this is a day I want to thank you for my great honor to be your mayor uh, for 22 years. To me, there's no greater honor than what the people bestowed upon me. You have given me the opportunity to be your mayor. It wasn't given to me. I had to work hard and earn your vote and your respect and your confidence that we can move forward as a community and as a city. No part of this city should be another part of this city. It should not be divided. It should not be separated. We're all brothers and sisters in all fashions of our life. And that's what we have to reaffirm, that people can work together, that we can do better things, and the future is always bright. Another generation of your children and grandchildren will come forward and will do great things because you have built the foundation for our city and for your homes. Thank you and God bless you.